Hey there everyone, I'm meteorologist Hannah Fink and today we're going to be talking about the new EF5 rating that came out for the Enderlin tornado that happened back on June 20th. During this summer, there was a numerous amount of severe weather events that happened in multiple states, specifically more towards the Midwest. Well, the one we're going to be talking about that happened specifically on June 20th happened in North Dakota. There were numerous tornado reports there, but there's a specific one we want to talk about. There was many videos of it circulating online of this really big tornado, and a lot of people came out saying, how is this only an EF3 tornado? Well... The Grand Forks National Weather Service office in North, in North Dakota has come out with a new public statement. So originally, that same derecho produced what used to be an EF3 tornado, but after further damage assessments and additional surveying, it has been upgraded to an EF5 rated tornado. This makes it the first EF5 tornado since the 2013 Moore, Oklahoma event. We'll be going over the public statement from June 23rd, which was just three days after the event, and comparing it to the now new statement that, that came out earlier today, which is October 6th. So we'll be breaking that down and then compare, doing a compare and contrast at the end as well. So let's get right into it. So here we go. So this right behind me, this is from the Iowa, the Iowa Environmental Mesonet. This is a good site to go back to archive National Weather Service uh, statements that came out, warnings, watchers, etc. It's just a good place to go to for archive data. So we're going to read right into it. So the National Weather Service damage survey for 620 Enderlin tornadoes. Here is the overview and what it says. It is import important to note these results are preliminary and subject to change, which it has. Uh, pending further evaluation. National Weather Service damage surveys results take into account damage intensity for scientific proven damage indicators. If and when more damage evidence is available, further evaluations of the damage intensity will be investigated, which in this case it has. The Enderlin tornado resulted from a supercell thunderstorm that moved in from the west. This thunderstorm produced two long track tornadoes. The first tornado began three miles south of Enderlin in track to the northeast, then north across Highway 46, and finally to the northwest where it weakened and dissipated. This tornado was on the ground for around 12 miles and its widest was about one mile wide in width. Damage indicator indicators along the path of this tornado correlates to an EF3 damage scale with peak winds estimated to be around 160 miles per hour. If you don't already know, this is usually involved with an equation. There is a lot of math that goes behind damage assessments and what that means with peak winds and other mathematical numbers. So the EF3 damage was noted along about seven and a half miles of the total path. A second tornado developed. We're just going to read both of them, but we're really referring to the EF5 that happened. But since there were two involved with this statement, we're just going to go over both of them. A second tornado developed from the same supercell thunderstorm about four miles northeast of Enderlin and tracked to the southeast, crossed Highway 46, and then weakened and dissipated. This tornado was on the ground for around eight miles and at its widest about half a mile wide. Damage indicators along the path of this tornado correlates to an EF1 on the damage scale with peak winds estimated to be around 110. So the tornado we're really focused on is the Enderlin tornado number one. That is one we'll be really talking about. To go over the overall information, 160 mile per hour peak winds, its path was about 12 miles long, path width was about one mile, so referring to the tornado was about one mile wide. There was three known fatalities at this point, we did not know the amount of injuries, and this happened on the 20th of June of this year of 2025 at 11.02 p.m. Central Time. And its start location was south of Enderlin, and its end time was 11.21 p.m., and its end location was south-southwest south, of Alice. So two different counties there, 
and the survey summary the damage began at just a few just the damage began as just a few branches but within two and a half miles of the track the tornado gained intensity and significantly widened while south of highway 46 the tornado derailed several train cars and threw one train car approximately 300 feet additionally a cell tower was blown over crops destroyed and many large trees snapped with some debarked a tr a farm house was level with many outbuildings destroyed as the tornado moved north of highway 46 it caused devastating damage to two houses one being a farmhouse that was leveled and led to two fatalities the tornado continued north causing tree damage and eventually leveling another farmhouse leading to one fatality as the tornado moved to the northwest it bent over tall steel electrical transmission towers and then eventually weakened and dissipated so listening to that summary, you probably are questioning, how was this only an EF3? Well, a lot of people were questioning this. Over the summer, there was a lot of circulating questions about, is the uh, enhanced Vegeta scale accurate? How is this being discovered? How is this being determined? Because when you hear that, you think a really big destructive tornado. There's a lot more science that goes behind the damage scale as well as the calculations that go into it. So that's why we have these preliminary public statements that come out. They can always change. They're really just to go out and get that additional information out quickly as possible because everybody wants to know what's happening. Everybody wants to know why this tornado happened, what the scale is, and other information. So now we're going to go over the new public information statement that came out at 9 30 this morning so the national weather service in grand forks conducted additional surveys and worked extensively with wind damage experts to further investigate the 20th of june 2025 enderlin north dakota tornado number one that's the one we just went over the estimated maximum wind speed of the enderlin north dakota tornado number one is greater than a 210 miles per hour and occurred during the time of the train derailment south of Enderlin, North Dakota. The analysis involved forensic damage wind speed estimates for tipping several fully loaded grain hopper cars and lofting of tanker cars, including one empty tanker car that was tossed about 475.7 feet or 145 meters or 145 meters. The maximum wind speed also correlates to the maximum strength on the storm relative velocity data from this given state station national weather service station additional high-end damage indicators that have been reanalyzed and adjust, uh, adjusted to include damage to the trees near the maple river east of enderlin and damage the farmstead number two on highway 46. further analysis of the trees surrounding the maple river show extensive tree trunks remaining and debarking with a sand papering effect prevalent Pre prevalent prevalent excuse me trees with trees with attached root uh, ball displacements were noted including one where the original location could not be determined wind damage experts analysis it helped determine the damage at farmstead number two to be complete destruction with the foundation considered to be swept clean anchorings will limit the overall rating in this area trees around the farmstead were also debarked and saw root ball displacement the national weather service and grand forest would like to thank tim marshall jim ledoux dr cornell miller dr greg cop dr david sills and the entire northern tornado project at western university's canadian severe storms laboratory team for their assistance so over there on the far right this is talking about underland uh tornado number one that is now rated as an ef5 with peak winds greater than 210 miles per hour its path length was 12.10 miles and its path width or how wide the tornado was was 1.05 miles and luckily unfortunately there were loss of life but we did not discover more there are still only three fatalities that were originally described and zero injuries start time is still the same the location is still the same end time is still the same and end location is still the same the same information can also be found on weather.gov fgf if you would like to look into it a little bit more and down here 
they gave us the reference for the enhanced Vegeta scale classifications that go into the Tornado categories. And as you can see, EF5 wind speeds greater than 200 miles per hour when it originally was an EF3, which is wind speeds of 136 to 165 miles per hour. So here's a little bit more. We're going to go over. Here's the damage survey results that usually get posted. Um, uh, that usually get posted, that sent out by NWS itself, that Tornado 1 is the one in purple, Tornado 2 was the one we were talking about in the first public statement. Here is the uh, ransom slash case counties from the Enderlin number one tornado. Here are some pictures that are provided from this NWS office. Photo credits are also provided as well. This is a look at the tornado itself. Here is the train damage there that they keep referring to as well. And that continues on. A lot of these pictures were taken uh, and used during the assessment, which helps out greatly. You can see the derailment there. Train damage continuing on, continues. And just taking a look at these damage photos. There's obviously a lot more out there, but these were some of the main ones that they used to help with their new assessment. Here's a look at those uh, root ball displacements, displacements that they're referring to. Here's what it overall looks like to give you a picture in your mind of what that is. Here is some debarking slash sandpapering of the trees that you can see and that continues on as well. Debarking and more sandpapering. So I put together a easy comparison list to kind of give you a breakdown of what exactly this means. So the rating that changed, it went from an EF3 to now an EF5 rating, which is the first tornado to happen since EF5 rated tornado to happen since 2013, which is 12 years later. So this is a major upgrade. Wind analysis confirmed EF5 level damage. Peak winds definitely went up as well from 160 mile per hour to greater than 210. Reanalysis of damage and forensic wind calculations pushed wind estimates above that 210 mile per hour threshold. Path length has not really changed. The path geometry was indeed confirmed. The width also did not change. There was no change to the fatalities either. The biggest things that were used was the train derailment mentioned cars thrown 300 feet. Critical factor in an EF5 upgrade was there was fully loaded grain cars tipped and tanker cars lofted 475 feet. The tree damage originally when it was a three it was debarking, snapping, uprooting was noted. After reanalysis, complete destruction of trees in Maple River Valley, trunks stripped to stubs, extensive debarking, it, meaning that sandpapering effect. And the farm damage, farmhouse was leveled, foundation damage not detailed when it was rated a three. Farmstead number two on Highway 46 confirmed as swept clean debris scattered downwind. Lack of anchoring noted, but EF3 still supported by total destruction and tree damage. Now, damage indicators, primarily structural and tree-based EF3 indicators. Now, now that it's a five, it is expanded forensics evaluation using expert input, including engineering review and radar data correlations. And then these are the experts that were noted that I have mentioned. These were these are the people that confirmed forensic EF5 level findings. And then the radar data that was used originally was the radar that was at that given National Weather Service station. So that is really all for the breakdown of this new, I wouldn't say great mark in history but it's definitely a big mark in weather history for us just shows that after more reassessment that eventually we do get to the point we need to one thing people don't realize is how much goes into damage surveying that gets us to these points these are what help us determine the ratings the wind speeds the width etc there's a lot of math that goes into it there's a lot of people that go into it there's a lot of work that goes into it and another thing you have to take in mind with this is people have to get out there somehow to do this and when there's damage destruction people usually come first you need to help the people out before we can survey anything thank you so much for joining me for next weather we'll see you tomorrow